Hey guys, my name is Joey Wright and you are about to watch a small clip from my full length swimwear photography tutorial. If you've ever been interested in swimwear photography or just stepping up your on location photography game, you may wanna check out this tutorial that I produced with F-Stoppers where we put everything on the line and I showed everything I know uh, from pre-production planning to shooting on location with natural light to using modifiers and strobes and then of course post-production and retouching. So enjoy this short clip from the full length tutorial. So Lisa, there are a few things I want to go over before we shoot. Uh, I like to talk to every model if I can about this, regardless of experience. Uh, this is really more about you knowing how I work so that you're not trying to figure me out on the beach, okay? So we'll kind of get in sync now and then you'll know exactly what I want from you once we're actually shooting. So a couple things. First of all, your expression is by far most important to me. Your eyes and your mouth, the only things you can change on your face. That's what I'm gonna be looking at, all right? So your eyes, that's really where you'll sell your confidence, okay? That's where you're gonna sell a focus into the camera. And you're gonna do that by squinting for me, okay? So to get even more specific, you're gonna squint by raising your lower brow, okay? So just like if you were to look up into the sun, it'll kind of force you to squint. And there'll be times where you might have to because it's so bright, but there'll also be times where I have you in the shade and if you don't try, you're just gonna look like this, okay? Which will look kind of like you're daydreaming. What I really want you to look like is that you're focusing on my lens, which in the end will translate to you focusing on the viewer, and that's what really gives the connection when somebody's looking at a photo, is your eyes. That's the first place the, the viewer's gonna look. They're gonna see that, and when you look like this, that really looks like you are looking at them, okay? Uh, another thing is with your mouth. That's what I like to think of as sort of the temperature gauge of your expression. So it can be really cold and your lips are sealed, or it can be really warm and you're smiling, okay? So I want you by default somewhere in between, which is your lips are slightly parted and I can see a little bit of teeth, good, okay? So if I tell you throughout the shoot to warm it up a little bit, you know I'm referring to your smile. And if I tell you to cool it down, then maybe we look a little more serious. But that's what it's gonna do. If you seal your lips, then you're gonna look really serious, kinda tense, and that sort of conveys stress. So I don't really want it to look like that. I want you to look relaxed. So with your mouth slightly parted, you'll look relaxed because you really have to try to close your lips. So by just relaxing, they should part naturally, okay? So that's, that's your face. Now, if I want you to squint more while we're out there, I'm gonna give you a little sign like that. Okay, so I won't have to say anything. And it's important that while I'm directing you on set that I can give you some kind of cue or a hand signal because you might not be able to hear me, especially if it's windy, there are waves breaking, I'm kind of muffled behind a camera, okay? I could be 15 feet away from you. So rather than me shouting to you, I might just do something like this. Or if I pull my camera aside and give you a little smile, I want you to warm it up, okay? Another thing I'm gonna look for while we're out shooting is your hair. I'm gonna pay attention to your hair for you because I want it to look perfect. I know you wanna show off your beautiful hair and what we don't want is your hair to be hidden behind you. But we also don't want your hair to hide parts of you in front, okay? So we're always trying to show some hair and your neck and the suit. So that's kind of gonna be the key. So let's do this. Uh, right now your hair is all behind you so I wouldn't want that. If I say bring your hair in front on both sides, go ahead and kind of split it and bring it in front. Perfect, okay? Now, the other thing is I want to make sure your hair, where it is right now is great, is that it's kind of running down the side, sort of covering the armpits. But what I don't want to see is your hair falling in front, covering up your chest and the bathing suit, okay? Or your neck, all right? So if I have you posing with your right shoulder to the camera, I still want to see your neck. So instead of your hair being in front, I might tell you, hair off the shoulder, okay? And if I say hair off the shoulder, or if I do this, I'm kind of mirroring you, 
I mean to get the hair off the shoulder to clear the side that I'm looking at, okay? So if I turned you this way, good. Let's bring the hair off that shoulder, hair in front on the right, perfect, okay? Let's have you face me again. Let's bring your hair in front on both sides, which I typically, if I am shooting you straight on, I like to see hair on both sides, okay? So if you are posing right at me, you can almost assume that that's a good idea, okay? And I can kind of direct you otherwise. But what might happen is something like this, okay? So if that happens and I go like this, I just mean clear the hair off the chest, okay? But I still want you to keep in front. If I give you a little off the shoulder sign, that means go ahead and throw it behind you, perfect. Uh, another thing, with the position of your head, even though I want to give you some freedom out there and I don't want to stiffen you up like a robot when it comes to posing, I do want to have some control if I want to fine tune your pose, okay? And I'll do that by using some hand gestures. So if I want to move the direction of your face and let's say the direction of your nose, your nose is kind of what points, okay? I'm going to do this. This is like me grabbing your chin and then I can bring you down. So let's just practice it. Up, left, slow, right? Good. You just follow with the speed of my hand. Good, okay? If I wanna tilt your head, I'll do this. This is like me grabbing your face, okay? And then I can tilt, slow, good. And then if I wanna bring your chin down, you keep the tilt, nose this way, perfect, okay? So now I can control you without having to tell you left or right and confuse it while we're out there and it's loud and you can't hear me. So I can just do some hand gestures to kind of get your head in the position that I want it in, okay? So that kind of covers from here to here. With your body, couple things by default. Again, in a swimsuit, I want you to look confident. You're really just showing off that you've worked hard on your body. So with that, we really need confidence in your posture, okay? So by default, uh, let's get your shoulders back, okay? And then also, you're gonna arch your lower back and kind of stick your butt out behind you, okay? So that's sort of your little slightly over-exaggerated confident posture. Okay, so if I go like this when I'm out there and I'm looking at you, you know I want your shoulders back more, okay? If I go like this, I'm trying to get you to stick your butt out a little bit more, okay? Another thing is um, shoulders, hips. When we're posing, I really like to see dynamic angles. I don't want to see everything straight and aligned. So you could drop shoulders. So if I'm out there and I kind of put down my camera, that's always a sign that I'm going to give you some kind of command. So if I put down my camera, and I go like this, I want you to give me a little more shoulder movement, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I put down my camera and I kind of give you a little hip pop, we'll do that. Or if I tell you, let's move the hips more, I'll let you know either way, okay? So hip movements, shoulder movements, that's all really good. Perfect. Okay, another thing with your feet. I want you to, when I, whenever I'm showing your feet, I want your feet extended and your toes pointed. Okay, so if I'm shooting you full length, which I would let you know, so you don't have to stand on your toes the entire time, I want you up on the toes, okay? Even if you're sitting and your feet are laying in the sand, I want your toes pointed. My little key word for that is Barbie feet. So if I say Barbie feet, point those toes just like a Barbie doll. I think that pretty much wraps up everything. Now we can get out there and start posing with you and I won't have to shout, I won't have to confuse you. I can get you to turn and make small adjustments as I need to. While it's nice to get a professional model in front of your camera who knows how to pose and might be able to just knock it out of the park without much direction, chances are, as you're getting into this, you're probably gonna work with models who need a lot of help and direction. One of the biggest complaints I hear from models on a day-to-day -day basis about other photographers are photographers who are very quiet during the shoot, not giving them feedback, not directing them. So let's show you how to take control and really make sure you are posing them correctly to get the most flattering angles out of each model. And I'm gonna start with some of my basic posing strategies that can help you out on any shoot if you happen to get a model in front of your camera that really pretty much needs your full assistance. Let's first start out with our model just standing in a basic straight on position with nothing to use as a crutch or a prop. That would be the most basic situation you could put yourself in. So let's see how we can take her just getting right in front of your camera not giving you anything as far as a pose. Let's see what we can do to make our model look her best. The first thing I see here looking at Lisa is that she's very straight. She has no angles in her pose. So a couple points of the body, the main points where we wanna start creating those angles are going to be the shoulders and the hips. So Lisa, 
Let's get you to pop your hip out to one side either way. Good, and really exaggerate it. I think it's always best that when we're shooting, we over exaggerate the poses. In fact, I always tell the models, if you feel uncomfortable, you're probably doing it right. If you feel super comfortable and relaxed, you're probably not trying hard enough. So Lisa, really pop that hip out. And then the next thing I'm gonna have her do is naturally her shoulder wants to come down on the side that the hip is sticking out, and that's okay. I actually want her to exaggerate that a little more. So Lisa, let's bring your right shoulder down just a hair more. Perfect. Now, a couple of things that might happen when you have a model in this type of pose is that she might lose her left arm. So Lisa, let's put your left arm behind the body for a second. This is something I see a lot, is that a model might have one arm go behind the body. I don't want to lose any limbs. So I would tell her, Lisa, let's bring your left arm just back in front. There you go, and just let it relax. Perfect. And another thing I'm noticing is we're seeing the top of her hand. Typically, I like to see the sides of the hands. I don't wanna see the palms of the hands. I don't wanna see the tops of the hands. So Lisa, with your left hand, I want you to turn it a little bit so I'm seeing more of your thumb and the side of the hand. Perfect. Good. Another thing that you can see what she's doing well is that her hands are sort of naturally cupping. And I always say that if I need to explain the hands to a model, cuppy hands, and they kind of get what I'm saying. You should almost be able to hold your hand up and have a little water in it and it won't spill out. That's sort of the natural position of the hand. If it goes too straight and the fingers, Lisa, let's see your fingers just go straight. They look like karate chop hands or uh, robotic hands. That's what I like to avoid. So let's relax your fingers again. There you go, good. Another thing I see often is the hands will come in front of the leg. Lisa, let's put that left hand in front and spread the fingers. This I see all the time. I call that the Mickey Mouse hands. So I like to avoid sprawled fingers as well. So Lisa, let's go ahead and put the fingers together. Good. And then let's bring that hand back to the side. Perfect. So I like her lean right now with the shoulders. I like her hip out. Lisa, if you could, your knee, I want you to swing it a little more in front of the other leg. You're right, there you go, perfect, good. One thing I always tell models is not to point limbs at the camera. So I wouldn't have a knee pointing at the lens or an arm or elbow pointing at the lens. That will just tend to shorten her limbs. What we're always trying to do is make her look as long and tall as possible. That is the biggest favor you can do with your model. Uh, let's take a look at Lisa's head for a second. Lisa. Back to how I showed you I would move and position your head. We've got her shoulders slanted to the side. We've got her hip popped out. And maybe I want to add one more angle with the position of her head. So a lot of times you'll see the model, they'll just kind of keep their head going with the body. We've got her shoulders leaning to our left. Then her body curves out to the right and her hips go back to the left. I like that, that's great. That's what we would call the S curve on the body. But her head is also leaning over and it looks like she's about to tip. So let's sort of center her balance again at the head level. By Lisa, I'm gonna have you just tilt your head a little bit. There you go, perfect. And maybe your nose this way here, great. And let's straighten you up just a little bit because it looks like you're gonna fall over, perfect. So let's get your shoulders a little more and the hip out more, perfect. There we go, good. Now she's in a much more interesting pose. Just to show that comparison, Lisa, I want you to snap back into straight pose. Good, now drop back into where we were. Perfect. So with a few simple directions, we can take our model in this three-quarter position that I have here from a boring, straight, comfortable pose to a nice, relaxed pose with some nice dynamic angles. Let's switch things up just a little bit. We've got the front on pose. We've created some angles with that. A couple other things we could do with it are the hand positions. Lisa, let's Let's drop your hip out again to the side. Good. Now maybe bring one hand up and the other hand to the elbow. Great. So here, here's one way we can transition from the pose we were just in to a new pose. What I think is best is if we can sort of get a nice little rhythm in our posing and flow from one pose to the next pretty seamlessly. So this is a nice way to kind of get her to look a little relaxed and also it's a nice position to kind of give her that sort of shy, innocent look because she's almost hiding behind that hand. If we want to actually go with the innocent look a little more, what we could do is say, Lisa, let's turn you away from me a little bit. Good, perfect. 
Now we've got a similar pose. All we've done is turned her slightly. And when she's turned away from the camera and looking back at us, what that does is that does give us a little bit of a shy innocence. Lisa, let's get you to just turn even more. In fact, one thing I want to point out here is right now we've got her hair in a braid. We actually did that specifically because of the wind that we're experiencing. Uh, if we had Lisa standing in that position with her hair just down, it would be blowing in front of her face and just swallowing her face whole. So we put it in a braid to help out with some of this posing. Lisa, I want you to turn a little bit more and look over the shoulder at me. Perfect. Now, this is the over the shoulder looking back at the camera pose. So this is showing the back of the swimsuit. It's also creating a nice, again, a shy look. And we can exaggerate that or we could relax it based on her shoulder position. So Lisa, what I first want you to do is raise the shoulder up. There you go. If she raises the shoulder and hides her chin a little bit behind the shoulder, that's exaggerating the shy look. If we wanna make it look a little more confident, let's have you drop that shoulder. There you go. Good. Now, she's dropped the shoulder. We can see more of the neck. There's some separation between the chin and the shoulder, and it's not quite as shy. So that's just a couple options. A couple things we can look at when she's posing directly at the camera, and ways that I would get some variety out of this, are her leg positions. So we've had her knee cross in front of the other leg. Let's do that again. Good. Another thing we could do with the leg is if, Lisa, swing your left knee out away from the body. Perfect. Good. So by simply just changing up the leg position, we've kind of changed the entire pose. Her hand again is in front of the leg. It's not horrible. I like the position of it. But what I might tell her to do is, Lisa, let's put your hand a little more on top of the left leg. There you go. Good. In fact, what I could tell her to do, and while I'm telling her this, I'm actually showing her and I'm doing the same thing. I'm essentially mirroring the pose for her, which is a really helpful way to get her to do exactly what I want without confusing her about which leg or which hand I'm referring to. So Lisa, let's even move the hand a little bit behind the leg. Perfect. Now you can see that we've sort of opened up the body again. Lisa, bring that hand in front again. I want to point out one thing. When we have her hand in front, you can see the arm kind of, it tends to hide her hip a little bit. So what I want to do is make sure the line of her body is actually showing the whole time. So let's go back and put that hand on top. There we go, perfect. Now we can see that hip again. The hand is still there. We haven't lost the limb. Maybe Lisa, your shoulders are a little straight. So let's go ahead and drop them again. Perfect. And as you drop them, just let that hip pop. Good, excellent. So again, we've got the angles and the shoulders. We've got our hip out. We have that nice S curve going on. Let's see what else we can do with a forward facing pose for a three quarter shot. Even though I'm not shooting her, I, I wouldn't be shooting her full length at this point, her foot position is still important. Lisa, let's have you cross one foot in front of the other. Good. So that actually changes things up even for the three quarter shot by getting the one leg in front of the other. It really gives us a nice hourglass effect, which you can see on her body. So now let's again, let's get your shoulders dropped on one side. Perfect. The arms are nice and relaxed. From here, there's one more thing I can point out. It's her right arm is hanging and it's off the body and it's what I might call the dead arm, okay? Where it's just sort of hanging straight. It's not really doing anything. It's not bad, but I think it can be a little better. Lisa, let's have you tuck your right elbow a little bit behind the body. Perfect, good. So by doing that, we're sort of aligning her arm and getting it into the same curve as the rest of the body, which looks really nice on camera. We've put Lisa back in our standard, straight, boring position, and we're gonna to try to transition her out of this again into another position with the arms. This is a good pose or strategy for helping to accentuate your model's bust if needed. We can do this by folding or crossing the arms. So Lisa, let's have you go ahead and fold the arms. There we go, perfect. So this is, if you were to ask your model to fold her arms, you'd probably get something like this. Right off the bat, we have way too many fingers and we have the tops of the hands showing. So let's fix that. Again, I want to reiterate that if you guys don't take away the exact specific poses out of this, just remember that what we're trying to do is hide the hands when possible, not show the palms of the hands, not show open fingers. We want to show cuppy hands 
sides of the hands when possible. So we'll apply that to this arms folded pose as well. So Lisa, let's go ahead, instead of having your left hand on top of the right arm, let's put it behind the arm. There we go, underneath, perfect, good. And try if you can to grab a little bit more behind with your right hand, great. Now what I don't wanna see is your arm out in front of the chest. I want you to kind of get it behind if you can. Perfect. Lastly, we want to get those shoulders angled as much as we can and help it out by shifting the hip out to the side. And if you can't remember which way the shoulders and the hips should go, here's the simple rule. It looks best and it'll look most balanced if her shoulder that is coming down is meeting the hip that is popping out. So you can see it's like they're trying to touch each other. So let's show that the wrong way. Lisa, let's switch your shoulders, but keep your hips exactly where they are. You see how that looks like she's about to fall over? That would be the wrong way to do it. But I promise you, you'll get models that will naturally put themselves into that position. So if you have to explain to them, tell them, stick your hip out to the same side as your shoulder is coming down. There we go, the right way is there. So right shoulder is down, right hip is out. It works out nice. And again, Lisa, let's show one more, one more idea with the balance. Go ahead in that same position again. What she's doing great right off the bat is tilting her head to our right, but a lot of times you'll have the model with their head straight or going with the body. That's fine as long as it doesn't like, look like she's about to fall over. Another thing I don't like to see is, Lisa, let's get your head very straight. Keep your body exactly where it is and your nose is very straight. To me, this is okay, but a lot of times in some of these exaggerated poses, it will look like your model is trying to straighten her head for the camera. I have no problem at all with angles of the head position. So I would actually prefer that your head either tilt to the right or go the other way. Perfect. It softens the pose when her head tilts. And what it also does is it adds another angle into the shot that makes it more interesting. Remember, if you take away the concepts here, is that we're trying to create as many angles to make this as interesting as possible since our only focus is really the model here. Let's switch it up, put Lisa back into the standard boring pose. Good. And let's work with a side position. So Lisa, let's have you, because your hair braid is on your right shoulder, let's have you turn to the right. Great. So let's work from a side pose. If we have Lisa just standing in the boring position from the side, what can we do to fix this? Well, we're not really showing much of the body. We've got her arm hiding it. So I would try to avoid these complete profile shots if possible. A Couple things we can do is Lisa turn a little bit toward the camera. Face me just a little bit, good. I would prefer to see her slightly facing the camera rather than at a total profile. Or let's go the other way, Lisa. Let's, let's get your back a little bit more toward the camera. Great. I hope you guys enjoyed the short clip. The full tutorial will include everything I know about swimmer photography, starting with planning and pre-production to shooting on location with various lighting methods, and then finally to post-production and the retouching workflow. So if you're interested in this full tutorial, you can learn more over at fstoppers.com store.